Hello, friends. Is your old geared head lathe giving you the profit lose? Well, step up to high profitability and much increased production with vintage Enco accessories. We'll start with the tailstock turret here. This one here was supplied by the blade. Incredible productivity right there. <laughs> and from Rob's shop, the Enco front mount 5C call it closer. Now Rob had it mounted like this and I think that's the best way to do it. If you have it out here it becomes a, a shop hazard. <laughs> And this is a German-made item, and uh, it's really quite different than what you might think. It's not the easiest thing to use. For, for one thing, you have to screw the collets in, and that's how you adjust them. Then you lock this lock screw here to use. It'll, it'll keep it from drifting, but uh, to lock it, it uh, it's back locked, and I can get it not too tight, and I can pull it. Let's see if I can pull it there. See, it's unlocked, and to put lock it back here. <coughs> That's locked back in, and uh, it, it, it could be a little bit tighter, but to, to make it tighter, you have to uh, unlock it, and then uh, you need the three-prong wrench, uh, which we can't find <laughs> at the shop there. I'm going to fabricate something or order them. They make them out of nylon that fits into these collets to hold them or turn them. <laughs> so that's how, that's how this works. Um, here's a, a JFK uh, lever assembly that might even be close to the... Uh, right length but uh that would be cheating <laughs> this is uh actually what i've got going on here it's like a it's like my little uh mini museum now when i first started in machine work uh, working uh, actual work in the 1970s. The shops around here had equipment like this. They didn't have jig boards, but they, this is the mills. And not many had the uh, uh, cutter grinders, but you know, some form of grinding. And uh, only the government outfits had the model, Monarch 10 E lathe. So, this was typical, and I've seen it in, in the old shops, where they would use this tailstock to it and, uh, and uh, call it closer off, often like, like this. And uh, it, it's kind of a neat thing to go back in time and uh, actually work with this stuff. I, I haven't seen these parts in use for quite some time. I haven't seen one of these collar closers for a very long time. But I, I, <laughs> I haven't been looking for them. But the hookup will be real easy in this position. Uh, I could just come off this uh, bolt hole here. There's a threaded bolt. I'll make a clamp that curves around probably out of, uh, or a base out of uh, aluminum. Then uh, tie it to this part here so the lever will will work <laughs> properly. We'll stand back and take a look at this incredible situation here. <laughs> mm. And I'll have a drink of coffee. Okay, now typically, this is typical. I'm back at it again. The same thing I go through with all these chucks. A lot of people don't do this step, and I think it's important to do, is to check it out. What's happening here? Well, I checked it with two collets. It's, uh, this is an old counter shaft um, out of something, but it, it, it's never been run. It's 
looks a little scuffed up, but it, um, it's a counter shaft out of an industrial transmission, and it's very true. I've inspected it. So I'm looking at with this old uh, uh, cracked inner rapid, which is actually the best uh, little indicator ever made. It's got 10 thousandths run out. Okay. Now, I found, uh, I did a run out check here. Here's, here's high. It goes low here. So I already... Uh, stoned the back of the um, of the mounting plate here and so I've got that uh, uh, good checked it for fit it seems to be good you know the uh, tapers not too loose so I'm gonna go ahead and face this get this uh, true here and then start working forward with it and get it and get this thing to run true here. Ten thousandths here. Let's run it to the end. I'm going to have to move this lever right here. And it's going to be terrible here. I know I'm... Oh, get it. Make sure it's not on that little uh, slot. Okay, what do we got here? Ooh, or, oh, I did have it on that slot. Let me see if I can get it back. I got another shaft's a little different. Okay. And we're looking at 10, 15, 20. Maybe 25,000 uh, more out that way. So, you know, for this thing to be reasonable, a lot of people live with red art like this, you know, just use uh, larger stock and, and work it down. But, uh, okay, I'm going to take this thing apart. I'm going to face this and, uh, and start working forward and, and see what happens. Get this thing uh, to run true or not. But I think it'll run true. I really do. Okay. Now, <laughs> I tell you, I, uh, this is my new channel. And um, it, <laughs> it's kind of funny how... Uh, YouTube works and it's just too much to get into it's uh, YouTube's a weird thing but um, <laughs> what uh, what I want to do is uh, not have any advertising now what I do is uh, advanced machining and I am a professional and I'm not a joke or an entertainer or anything else, but I, I have a good time in my shop here, and uh, I entertain myself, and I like to bring, <laughs> bring you along. But I'm a serious machinist like Rob. I do different things. And there's another guy retiring, too, that does uh, something else. And we all, we all uh, have had our own businesses. And I think that might make it a little different for us, you know. It's like uh, a lot of people work this uh, craft in many ways, and they work somewhere for a lot of years and uh, work their way up the chain and all that, and in the end, they get a gold watch. Well, if you're in business for yourself, and uh, you work hard enough, in the end, when you retire, you can get an inch metric model 10 double E late, which is a lot cooler than a gold watch, in my opinion. But the people that work for the gold watch get kind of bitter when they're old, and uh, they get on the internet and become bullies. I've seen it many times. Oh, a heater came on, so I got to speak up. <laughs> well, I had somebody complain about this. Uh, I'm getting back to the... Uh, the technical nature of uh, what I do and uh, there's uh, not a lot of interest in that you know it's a low interest thing like a like a cave exploring probably has more interest but it's limited you know it's like uh, I don't know tool reviews or something gets millions of views but that's not what I do and you complain about 
the sound and stuff like that. I'll show you my entire production company outfit. It's right here in my hand. It's an old GoPro 9. I made this aluminum stuff because the plastic stuff has fallen apart. So what I'm going to do is try something like a PayPal account or that Patreon or whatever's easiest and have that. So if people want to want better sound and they want uh, edited videos, it, it costs money that I don't have. So, but thanks to Warren Jones, he made it possible that you're seeing this video here with two GoPro batteries. <laughs> And I can probably make a couple hundred videos that way. So we'll go that way for a while. And uh, I can only make them uh, 11 minutes and 48 seconds with this GoPro because it chapters it. And I don't have editing. My computer's not powerful enough and, the can uh, and all that. So I need a new computer and all that to do edited videos longer than 11 minutes and 48 seconds and we're at 11.31 oh, no, 27, it's hard to read 28, 11.28 so I've got uh, just about I don't know, 15 seconds or something but uh, hey, I'll get back and, and set up this uh, um, income so, bye